Hello, this is Conversations from Gameology.ir, and my name is Hamid Rizani Kufar. In this episode, we have a great conversation with Glauco Longi, the character artist at Naughty Dog, working on the precious Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. I believe in the dictionary they should put his picture in front of Ward Artist, because he's the real deal in his profession. Just waiting for the music. Again, go. Yep. Now I have a confession to make here. I forgot to uncheck the stereo button while recording the call, so you can hear me on the left channel and Glocko on the right one. I fucked it up, I know, but you know, it's kinda cool. Uh, it's like a round table when you're at the center and you're listening to us. Nah, I take responsibility for that. But it's an amazing one. The level of coolness of this guy is sky high. So let's listen to this. Amazing how I sync myself with music. Hello and good morning, Glauco, if that's the right pronunciation. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> man, I got it. You just yeah. made my day. Okay, uh, thank you very how much. How do I spell yours? What? What? Uh, your name? How do I spell your name? Oh, uh, my name. Hamid Reza Nikufar. Can you say that? Uh, <laughs> it's hard for me. Can I just say Nico Far? <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much for being our guest in this episode. I think it was. Tonight. Yeah, I think it was two weeks ago that I first about, heard about you, and I was curious who this guy is. So I searched a little bit about you, and man, you're an absolutely true artist. Tell us <laughs> about yourself. How did you become this great artist uh, that you are right sir. now? Yeah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, well, I started my career when in 2006. Yeah. Maybe almost 10 years ago, I was doing some video editing for Brazilian companies. I'm from Brazil and I was living there back then. Uh, after that, I started doing some 3D modeling and animation. It was, yeah, maybe back in 2007. Yeah. And then I, I went went to an Alex Oliver presentation, which is, he's an awesome sculptor, like traditional sculptor and digital sculptor. And I got really excited about sculpting in general. And then I started doing some ZBrush modeling. Yeah. And then I realized that I needed to be good in traditional art to, to become a better digital artist. So I started doing some traditional sculptures as well. And, and then after that, I did a bunch of modeling, freelance modeling for abroad. And after a few years, I I was getting too much into traditional sculpture and traditional yeah. stuff. So I opened my own studio back in Brazil. I was doing makeup effects and almost, let's say maybe 75% of all the work that I was doing was traditional work. Yeah. But I was still doing some digital work uh, on my free time or some freelance. And then two years ago, almost two years ago, I came to the US to visit some studios, like some practical effects studios. And, and I also visited a bunch of game studios. Yeah. And, I, and in the game industry, I saw an opportunity to contribute to something bigger than I was doing back in Brazil. And I saw this huge and this new uh, uh, this new industry that was a lot and I decided to use all my digital experience and my traditional experience mm -hmm. and put a new portfolio and I got hired by Naughty Dog that's it <laughs> wow amazing yeah, yeah <laughs> so, it's, it's not only that but it's about 10 years so yeah. it's yeah it's a great journey now you're working yeah, on uh, Uncharted 4 at Naughty Dog man you play yeah. games often? Uh, yeah. Yeah, great. Because yeah. you know, I, I've I been playing games since I was a child. Wow, well, great. Because you know, I believe that no matter how much talented and skillful you are, if you're not passionate about video games, your work is not the same compared to your colleague who is crazy about video games. So, uh, so you, do do you call yeah. yourself a hardcore gamer then? No, 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 not at all. No, oh. no, no. Oh. no I. Don't know. I like to play like the new games that's coming up, mm -hmm. and sometimes I play games to I like, beat them. But I'm not like the hugest like 
hardcore player ever because I can say that I'm an artist as I'm doing art all the time. So mostly of my free time and my spare time, I'm doing art or doing some exercising. So yeah, you gotta choose, man. You gotta choose. It's yeah, impossible to do yeah. I know, I know. Now you do mind blowing sculpting. Is that Help, helpful to create a character in computer? Is it easier to create something real and then convert it to something, you know, digital? Thanks. Uh, we have... Uh, I don't think it's easier or harder. It's just a different medium. So yeah. a lot of digital artists has have... They, they have a really hard time going to traditional. But like I said, I started doing both almost at the same time. So... For me, my approach is just a, uh, it's just a different medium. So I know the limitations of traditional and I know the limitations of digital because on the digital, it seems to be, everything seems to be easier, but for me, it's not. So I, I cannot touch with my left hand. I'm just using my right hand, which sounds a little bit crazy, but for symmetry and this kind of stuff, it kind of avoids me. And the digital... So since we have symmetry, everything is so perfect, and I have to think about breaking the symmetry. And in traditional, we don't have symmetry, so oh. I don't think too much about it. So it's just one yeah. example of like how digital and traditional translate each other. Oh. Now, you know, uh, for me, sometimes interacting with real elements around me helps me understand what I do better. I'm a game designer and, yeah. and I mostly work on uh, with Microsoft Word, but uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I just play with objects around me in order to, you know, understand the inner feeling of an idea for a game. And it's really yeah. helpful. Yeah. This is, there is something special in touching stuff and, you know, observing them in different dimensions that cannot be done oh, yeah. with computer. And what you do, I think, is exactly the same. Do do you see the reality, the nature as the finest source of inspiration? Because, you know, uh, some people believe yeah. that mankind's old interaction and relation to nature and the real world is a limit mm -hmm. for our imagination. That sometimes we have to forget what's around us in order to reach something, you know, abstract. I'm asking yeah. this because you also design creatures too. So repeating the question again, yeah. when do you use nature as an inspiration and when do you run away from it? Uh... Yeah, designing creatures is something that I I really enjoy because yeah. uh, how can I put that? So I I want to design some crazy creatures, but what I really want to do is doing something believable. That for I've been doing some crazy creatures design in the past, but I still want them to make to make them believable. Mm -hmm. So nature is is the key to to make something believable because we have some really weird and crazy colors in nature and some weird patterns that we can translate and get these crazy yeah. shapes or creature design. So as far as we go with like shapes, we still have to maintain some believability to mm -hmm. it. So yeah, the, the challenging of creating something believable, it's what drives me on the creature design aspect. Yeah. Which one do you uh, love most, working on a badass creature or a badass human being? Uh, I don't know, man. Sometimes, so nowadays, I'm maybe because I'm working on Uncharted and everything is like realistic, uh, I'm on this kind of phase of my life that I really enjoy studying anatomy and I have this passion of, for human and animal anatomy. So nowadays, I'm not doing too much creature work on my spare time. So, uh, but there was a few years ago I was just doing creature and was loving it. So I, I kind of bounced between yeah. one of other uh, one and another. So it, it's kind of hard to pick one. Yeah. Each each one has their own challenges. So yeah, I think yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what is your uh, favorite creature in video games or uh, I don't know uh, films? Ah, Predator is one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, uh, what about Alien? Uh, yeah. Alien? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Alien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't like the... What about Creatures uh, in uh, Last of Us? They Last of Us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I have a very talented friend who is a character artist too, and I asked him if he has questions from you, and he emailed me a bunch of yes. good questions that I'm going to ask nice. you. So, yeah. 
I think you yes, can so. complete it. Go technical and geeky here. Okay. Yeah, uh, how did you, how did you understand human anatomy so well, and how can you create such amazing muscles? He was blown away by your muscles, the character's <laughs> muscles. Muscles, yeah. Maybe you. So, yeah. I've been doing anatomy studies for a while now, and I still feel that I have so much room for improvement. Because since you you keep studying forms and your eye develops, like how they see, it sees form better. Uh, every time I do this kind of round of anatomy studies, I can see more. Like in a sense that I realize that there's so much more to do and so much more to study and so and like secondary forms and tertiary forms it, it's like my eyes are opening every time I study so uh, yeah about muscles it's it's, it's kind of tricky but the muscles is they are not the most important part when you're studying anatomy bones and bone structure should be the first one and all the muscles just have they have formed just because they are on top of the the bone structure right so, uh, I would say you, sh you gotta study, you gotta study hard, and you gotta keep studying. If, if there is no much more to do than study, of course, your like first and second study will suck, but then after a while, you, you start getting the hang of it yeah. and focus on the bone structure first. Mm -hmm. Because if you see most of my studies, I show the bone structure under the muscles, even though like the skin and the muscle anatomy, it's kind of, oh, that drives people crazy. Oh, this is so cool and the muscles and the fibers and everything. But I'm really much more concerned about uh, the bone structure first. And then I yeah. lay down some muscles and then I kind of make the skin feel. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, do you create your characters in ZBrush from the start? Uh, it depends. If I'm doing a study, yeah, I'll, I'll probably jump into ZBrush and create everything from scratch. But on production, uh, it depends. Sometimes I do use, I start in Maya or 3D Max, and sometimes yeah. I use a base mesh and go right away into ZBrush, and then, but using a base mesh with UVs, yeah, it kind of depends. Depends on the project, on the budget, and on what I'm actually doing. Yeah. Now, uh, how do you create such amazing wrinkles in the skin and the fabrics? Uh, so in fabrics, it's kind of weird, but let, let me jump fabrics a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in skin, it's the same. You got to keep studying. And uh, I would say wrinkles and pores, they are important, but not as much as the, the anatomy itself and like the primary and the secondary forms. They should be a third layer or just a layer on top of everything people use they, they often like overdo pores and skins and, and wrinkles yeah. so it kind of messes up everything they did before mm -hmm. so one tip is just be careful and make another layer like a separate layer if you're working in ZBrush and make sure then when you turn it off and when you turn back it on it don't it won't don't change as much as the silhouette or the overall feeling of the piece. It should be like another layer yeah. and should be, it shouldn't. So let, let's say that without pores and wrinkles, your sculpture should still look awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, about folds and wrinkles in uh, clothing. Uh, well, it's it's another topic that you gotta mm -hmm. study hard. This is one of my weakest part, yeah. I guess. I haven't studied and haven't done many of these in a while. So every time I I, I have to do it, I have to go a little bit. But it it as everything else, you gotta keep studying. And uh, there are some videos and some really good books about uh, folds and drapery. Yeah. So there is some kind of anatomy in the drapery itself. So there is a few shape recognition that you can do when you see like um, where the knee bends. It will almost every time happen to, to have the same type of wrinkles. So you can start like understanding how they, they yeah. work. 
So, uh, if you want to be a great 3D character artist, should you be a great drawing? Uh, should you be great at drawing characters on paper too? No, definitely no. no. Uh, so, of course, everything that you do related to art will help. So, if you are a good photographer, it will help. If you are a good drawing a draftsman, it will help. But no. I, I wouldn't say that it's. So most of my friends that are really good character artists, they are not good like concept artists or they are not, they don't draw that well. And myself, I, I keep drawing from time to time trying to improve it because I think this is really helps how we train your eyes to see shapes. But I don't think this is something necessary. They, if you, if you want to do 3D art, just do 3D art. Yeah. It's, it's not like, Oh, you gotta do this to achieve that. But of course, if you have the time and you are willing to spend and become like a master in the long, long journey, it, it will help a lot. And yeah, I wouldn't say don't do it, but you, you don't need to do it, right? Yeah, that's a relief for a lot of people, I think. Uh, have you ever yeah. had this repulsive feeling toward a part of a human body that it forced you to say, oh man, I hate working on human ears, for example. Is there a hate zone for a particular mm. part of human's body that you're not happy to work on? So, I wouldn't say that I hate it, but something that I, I was really struggling in the past was the hips and how mm. the muscles kind of attached to the hip and how the legs, we have this space between uh, the, the aces and and the start of the leg itself. And I was, I was struggling with it a little bit. And then I decided to kind of study it more. And now I really enjoy doing okay. and working on this area. So uh, I think hate, hating something, it's kind of, too much, right? So since you're not, you're you, not you're comfortable not with it, you know. Yeah, if you're not comfortable, like like I said, I wasn't comfortable with it. So you just gotta study it more. Me, if you are not comfortable because you haven't studied it enough, or you don't pay attention it enough to kind of, so maybe you lack information there. Yeah. So yeah, just just jump into it and do some quick studies and some long studies, and I'm sure you're gonna understand it. And it won't be like that anymore yeah uh, how long normally does it take to create a character mm. yeah this is a tricky one mm -hmm. uh, it depends if you are saying about cinematic or game model characters they depend they vary a lot uh, an estimation about a head from from scratch to finish for like a cinematic or a game just the head without hair I would say one week to two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on the character that, uh, that I'm working on. But it can take less, it can take like just three days. So it, it will vary a lot. It depends on the feedback on and the subject. If I'm starting with a scan or if I'm starting from scratch. So it, it really depends. It can take a full character. It can take two months to uh, three, four months. Wow. It can take one month if I'm reusing a lot of stuff. So, yeah, this is a really tricky one. I, I, I don't think you should be too much concerned about it. Just do your best and don't don't be concerned about how much time you're spending on it. Yeah. So, uh, which one do you love most, working on a video game or animations? Please, video games. Mm. Oh, video we games. We need definitely. you. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> video games, man. Video games yeah. is so much fun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, great. Now, how's it working on Naughty Dog on Uncharted, Uncharted 4? Were you a Naughty Dog fan before joining them? Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I put up my portfolio, I was focused on doing art and achieving this Naughty Dog uh, style because I wanted to work there. It was my priority, and my first goal was to get there. And I'm really glad I couldn't get it. I, I could get it, but... Uh, Oh, it's it's really awesome. It's amazing. Isn't it People the work there. Where is that? Uh, I, I'm curious. Is it stressful to work there? You know, it's naughty dog. It's just a little scary, I think. Because um, there are a lot uh, of pe good people out there, and you want to yeah, keep up the, with them. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, I feel like I'm surrounded by the best artists like ever. Uh, Every time, everyone that works there, they has this unique ability of doing something amazing, mm -hmm. and that's why they are there. So I'm really proud and glad that that, that they want me there, and uh, it's really a good, great experience. And I, I don't feel like nervous or like I said. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I cannot say something particular about the work itself. Is there I can a, say that it's awesome. Uh, is there a limit on uh, the way you work? Because they are obviously great and technical stuff, and uh, yeah, they can. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want without limit. Uh, is it true? Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we have limitations of the video game itself, and we have a lot of limitations of the engine and like frame rate and this kind of stuff. So, of course, I cannot do whatever I want, but but we are always trying to do the best as we can, and like engineers and all, all these guys, they are trying to make us feel like we don't have limitations, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a game out there that you want uh, that you wanted or want to work on? Mm. Uh, mm. I don't know. You know, you know what I think would be uh, a great project for you to work on. Yeah. Max Payne three. Now you tell me why. Max Payne. Yeah. Max Payne three. Uh, uh, is it out? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Damn, I missed I missed this one. <laughs> the games happen in Sao Paulo. I think you're from Sao Paulo. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm from yeah, that's Sao Paulo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> I remember seeing some, some videos. It came out maybe one year and a half ago. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, I remember seeing this one. Uh yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't think I would enjoy working on this one. Maybe doing some characters, but yeah, yeah. I think I would have more fun playing this one than uh -huh. really working on this one. <laughs> uh, uh, this year's E3 was amazing. What games are yeah. you most exi excited about? Uh, I'm really excited about Uncharted 4, man. <laughs> ah, to me too. <laughs> I want to play this game. <laughs> you uh, play that game, game? while in... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is uh, it good? <laughs> yeah, it's really Should fun. Should I play this game? <laughs> <laughs> It's really fun. There's this Drake guy, and he's <laughs> like, like killing some guy. Uh, the graphic. Oh, uh, E3 really was awesome. It was. <laughs> E3 was really cool. It was my first E3 like live that I was actually there, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really looking forward to. Any specific game? I saw a bunch of really cool games there, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward for next week for uh, Metal Gear. Wow. I really want to play this game. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the series, and this is a uh, the only one that I have in mind, Metal Gear, right now, yeah. that I'm really excited about. Me too, man. I can't wait for that. So, uh, okay, that's it. We're done. Gleco, thank you so much. You're such a great and inspiring guy. And yeah, I man. wish you the best on your career and your uh, life. I wish. You're the best. Uh, <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And I really appreciate the time. And thank you. Yeah, feel free to drop me questions anytime and count me in. I'm always willing to have help and glad to yeah. be able to be in this position right now that I can sure. inspire and, and help really people. Yeah, we needed it, you know, uh, we have a lot of, uh, we would have a lot of podcasts with game designers and uh, I don't know, level designers and, and uh, this, I, I think uh, there, are, uh, there are a lot of questions for uh, other people on uh, character artists, uh, who yeah. want to be a character artist and Uh, you help them a lot. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not into this uh, uh, job. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, man. Awesome. Thank you, yeah. man. Catch you later. Goodbye. Yeah, bye.